The Mirror say carnage, the Express says victory. Uh, which do you think it is? Well, the Express is fairly lonely in the front <laughs> pages this morning. It has to be said, most of the Tory-leaning papers, which you would usually categorise the Express as, aren't quite so enthusiastic about this budget. Uh, looking at, for example, the, the Daily Telegraph, talking about the, uh, the, the rhetoric of George Osborne with the policies of Gordon Brown. The Let's not taxes. forget mm. that these, uh, the hundreds of thousands of people who've been moved up from paying no tax, getting up to that 20p bracket, the people that were in the 20p bracket who are now pushed into the 40p bracket, and indeed the many people who have been pushed into that 45p bracket, of course something that uh, Kwasi Kwarteng wanted to abolish, and now instead is affecting more people than ever. This is a really quite high taxing budget, so high of course, that the tax burden will reach in 23-24 the highest it has ever been in recorded history in this country. So whilst the uh, left-wing papers of course are complaining that this is a Tory budget, there's many right-wing papers that are complaining that this is actually a pretty left-wing budget. Yeah, and, and they shot some of Labour's foxes, for instance, on, on the, the higher rate of tax, the 45 pence mm. rate coming down to 125,000, the windfall tax coming in. Yes. So there's a lot of political elements in it as well. A huge number of political elements. In fact, it's very hard to see the difference now between the Labour Party and the Conservative Party. There's a, an extra windfall tax on electricity generators and the windfall tax that was on oil and gas has gone up from 25% to 35%. That's on top of all of the taxes they already paid. So it's quite an extraordinary level of tax being levied on energy generation. But more than that, there's so many other areas where the, the, the sort of more pernicious stealth style taxes are coming in. And it all adds up to a big, big increase in tax. And that's before we get on, of course, to the decrease in spend, most of which doesn't come about until after 2024. There's budget limitations, so uh, budgets are basically being frozen for most departments other than health and education. But in real terms, a frozen department means that, uh, given the inflationary environment, they're going to have the same amount of money uh, trying to stretch around to things that have become more expensive. So those efficiency savings, as they're described, will have to be found in many departments. Uh, that's on top of the big wage bills that those mm. departments will now have to come with pay settlements coming in higher than expected. So a really tough time for budget managing in many departments. And of course, we've heard already the news that, for example, the defence budget, that ambition to get to 3% of GDP, well, in the short term at least, it's staying at 2% of GDP. So there's really not not many uh, good bits, some positive stories out of this. We heard the Triple Chancellor. Triple lock, maybe, I suppose, we, is one thing for the pensioners. That, so so yeah. that, that is that the one thing cheer. that the Daily Express yeah, has yeah, really exactly. gone in on. They've been running this campaign on the Triple Lock. £11 billion being spent there, the biggest single spending measure uh, in this budget, in this autumn statement. Uh, of course, raising uh, a double-digit uh, figure there, 10.1% for, for, for pensioners. And do, equally, those on benefits are also getting getting that inflation busting rise as well. But the other little, but of course this was expected, this was pre-rolled. All of the things that the Chancellor tried to say that were sort of the big points of light, whether it was the funding £700 million for Sizewell C, that nuclear power plant in Suffolk, well that was pre-announced as well. In terms of the things that you might think, oh there's a chink of light, none of it was new.